Hey, welcome to the Page Family Homestead. My name's Peggy. Oh, I wish I could turn the camera around and show you what my husband just did. Never mind. So Today, the woman at the <laughs> today we're dehydrating again. Um, I've noticed that we had some cucumbers, some peppers, and also some uh, spinach leaves that were not doing well. So we do enjoy having cucumber chips. Mm, and yeah, this is good. a great way. Now, if you guys ever buy those popcorn flavorings, you could sprinkle those on top before you dehydrate. So I just cut them up, you can see here, nice and thin. The thinner you cut them, the quicker they're going to dehydrate. Put Parmesan cheese on that would be good too. We did, with Parmesan yes, yeah. cheese. That was our favorite. Yeah, Today we're good. going commando. We're putting nothing on these. Commando. Commando. Oh, 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 oh. So there's our cucumber. And That's then Ralph Mando. <laughs> <laughs> you do not need to blanch your spinach before you dehydrate. It does not change the flavor. Um, you could blanch if you really want to for three minutes. It's not necessary. I just make sure I watch it, wash it and then I um, take off any little bits like that one right there. Just go through it. You get any big veins, you might want to just pinch off the big vein. Um, I'm going to be grinding most of these into a powder to go with my vegetable powder that I'm building slowly. So I've salvaged this much spinach. Rather than let it go to waste, I'm going to save it. Same with our peppers. It's also a vegetable that is not required to be blanched prior to dehydrating, which makes it one of the easiest to do. And they will be kept either, some of them I will put into a powder, especially the red or the yellow, for, for some color. Um, the rest I'll be putting into sealed jars, and I'll show you that at the end as well. Now, I had half a bag of potatoes that were starting to look like, seriously, not my favorite things in the house. I've kept my potato water. I'll show you that in an upcoming video, what we're doing with this. Now, the potatoes... I left a tiny, tiny little bit of water. Not much. You want no fats in here. Fat is your enemy when you're dehydrating. <laughs> it's your enemy. <laughs> yes, it is actually. So you don't want fats. You don't want salts or seasonings or anything. I just... I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. That's not why you saved it. Potato water. Just like that, we've got some boring mash. And what we're going to do with that... Did I put them on the bottom? Mm, yeah. Good eyes. <laughs> oh, good eye. You're the one under my nose. <laughs> We're just going to put this on our, this is called the fruit roll-up tray. Um, I've never made them. <laughs> We're just going to spread it out. What are we doing? We're making instant mashed potato flakes. Yep. And what this will do is, I didn't have enough to can. And I didn't need any more because I went ahead and did a few more bags of my potato slices. Uh, for soups, stews, and what have you. So I thought, you know what? <laughs> There's times when I will use these instant mashed potatoes, the homemade version, for uh, thickening stews or soups too, right? Like not just for mashed potato. So you put that on pretty thin, eh? I did. Very yeah. thin. I'm probably going to use a few more trays than what I have out, but I've got more in the back. So I'll do one more with you. And they're all veg, 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 veg. So it's all going to go. <laughs> I pointed at my husband too. Look at me, I'm so <laughs> They're all going to go at the same temperature to be dehydrated. And if you don't have these trays, I do suggest you get them. 
If you can't, um, I didn't have them at first. Eh? I used uh, parchment paper. Yeah, parchment paper. Yeah. I was going to say, so long as you got that hole in the middle, parchment paper will work fine. Yeah, you're right. Do you hear that, everybody? I have a right. Sometimes. <laughs> Let's mark this one down in history. <laughs> That's your second time oh, on camera being right. <laughs> Don't get used to it. I don't know. <laughs> And this is going to be so handy to have in the house again. I don't like the store-bought ones. I don't trust them. So I'm going to carry on. I'll bring you back when I got them all loaded. Okay, so I had to make some executive kitchen decisions. <laughs> I needed the potato, the mashed potato done more than I needed the crisps, the cucumber chips. So I took off a tray and a half of the cucumber slices and I just mixed them with vinegar and water added some Ooh. herbs and spices and that'll go for our salad tonight for dinner and as i said i've retained that potato water save yours guys tater we got water a, tater water we got a big project coming up later in the week so we've got 10 trays of saved food we've got one two three Whoa. four five trays of mash Whoa. And it's just, you saw, Ooh, just cool. potatoes, a little bit of the starchy potato water just to, so we could smooth it out, right? Yeah. And then we have one and, and some more It looks more like you there. should have cheese on that tray. It looks like a platter, <laughs> yeah, veggie like a platter. tray. So we got some saved uh, spinach, peppers, peppers and spinach. Cucumbers. Oh, there's some more cucumbers, so we're not going without our cucumbers. Oh, that's good. There. And as I said, for the cucumbers, you can do that the same thing with zucchini. We do prefer the zucchini oh, way over they're the good. cucumber. They're really good. And we do sprinkle the powdered parmesan, not the fresh, because right. that's a, even the sprinkled is still a fat. But it, it does dehydrate nicely, yeah. and it does give it a nice flavor. Or our friends use that popcorn flavoring. Yeah, so that'd I, be good. I've got 10 trays. I'm not going to run it with 10. I'm, I have two of them, so I'm going to split them up so it goes faster. If I've been using it this way, which is quite, you're quite okay to do that, then I would, oh, my setting is already at, there it is, 135, which is fruits and vegetables. So it, it tells you what to do. As for a timer on this, don't need it. The reason is nothing, if they say six hours, it, it, there's so many variables. How thick is your food? What's the humidity outside? Like, if it's rainy out, it's gonna take more than six hours, I don't care, you know? So to me, that's just one of those functions you can have that break. If you have them and you like them because you feel better going to bed, setting it, knowing it shuts off, cool. But for me, the money I save by getting a set it and walk away version yeah. with the heat coming from the top so that as it pulls the moisture out of the foods it's not going into the machine down here it's just a, right. a catch-all tray and everything is easy wash I do recommend the Nesco I send it out to all my friends and family that are asking what are you getting like what did you get what kind was it I send them out this information on the Nesco I if this were to break down tonight I would be ordering another one tonight and the same model <laughs> I like it that much so I'm just going to let this work while I go and do other things and we'll come back and show you what kind of treats we have from this rescue. Okay, so I did, like I said uh, yesterday, I have two dehydrators. I only have 10 trays, so I, I got to order 10 more of each three, the non-stick, the roll-up, and the actual trays because... We seriously rely heavily on our dehydrated. So because I have two, I thought, why leave it stacked 10? It'll work. You just have to rotate more often. So I just threw them separate. I kept the potato all on one. I've already ground up one tray. I wanted to bring in to show you. This is what we're looking for. Now, it took about five to six hours. So what I did about halfway in, I rotated my trays, but I also came in and flipped so that the moist side was then up okay mm -hmm. so you can see they look a little thick here <laughs> yeah. Got a yeah. snap crackle pop to it, it. it's almost like there's air in there if I can bring you in like it's done it's oh, yeah. done 
So we got all these trays. I'm not going to bore you with it. Um, you can leave it like this and put it in the jars and, and vacuum seal them. And you can certainly use them as a... Oh, what am I putting in the wrong one? You can certainly <laughs> use it as a thickener for your soups and stews or mashed potatoes, which is what it intent was for. I'm very happy with it. I will be doing this again and again and again. Especially since it's something Rob can... I can make this for him. I can do him up a 10-pound bag, stick it in a jar. He's going to be what you do with the rest of the potatoes because, I mean, it looks like nothing, right? <laughs> but you need so very little. Where's my lid? Uh, get it? Got it. Now, this is clean. It just looks like crap because it's, like, older than my oldest son, I think. Now, you can do this with mortar pedestal. I did do it, and I found it was just a little too gritty, so we're going for the big gun. <coughs> when done, tap your lid. Open away from you because that powder, see it? Yeah, really. Yeah, you don't want to suck that up in your lungs. Nope. And in it goes. See see what that did? Just that little bit. Wow, eh? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and finish doing all this, and I'll show you what we got. Now, this was uh, probably half a bag, was it, yep. that I started with? So it's not even five pounds because we don't have 10-pound bags anymore since we switched over to the metric. It's just, I think they're just shy of 10-pound bags now. Yeah. So I'm going to finish this and I'll bring you back. Okay, so about five pounds, just shy of five pounds, because I don't think it was a full half bag. We have got, this is a pint jar, just under half a pint. Now there's a few chunkies in there, but nothing I'm worried about, because I know that they're going to constitute back. No problem. But look, look at that. Whoa. We that's got amazing. us some um, instant mashed potatoes, instant mashed guys. Potatoes. Now that's a sight smaller so, storage than yeah. that bag is. Yeah. Um, this will last properly sealed. Uh, they say three to six months. Because properly sealed, I think it's going to last a little longer. I think so too. You know, and for the amounts, I'm going to put up a screenshot of what they suggest for making it. I'm going to say use less of this potato powder because it's more concentrated than I think. It's very mm -hmm. dense. If I put in the full amount, it would be like, you know, you want fluffy. Play with it. Add spices. It's bland. It needs salt. It actually tastes good. It did. It had a nice yeah. potato flavor. It wasn't gritty at all. So all I did was follow the instructions that I'll post right here after I shut up. Okay, we'll be back when the peppers are done. Never going to happen, people. <laughs> it is. It's almost done. <laughs> okay, so I had to try this. I couldn't wait. All I did was I took the recipe. I'll give you the instructions that they call for. I didn't want to make a meal. I didn't want to make enough for two servings. I don't want to waste. I mean, it's not dinner time. My doggies will enjoy it. So will we. Um... I just used, uh, let me see, I think I just put a quarter cup of the powder and I took it aside. I put a quarter cup of water like you would for the packaged instructions and brought it to a vigorous boil. Added just a tab of butter, right, let that come back to a boil. And then I added 
the potato flake and just a little bit of milk and kept stirring with a fork till it was fluffy-ish. I did give it a taste and I think this powder is a little more concentrated than the store-bought version. Theirs is freeze-dried. So I will use next time less powder. However, not bad. Very bland. You have to season it. I did add a little bit of parsley, a little bit of onion flakes to this. I would add a little salt. It's one of those things that you just need. Always. Or a little fake salt. Let me, taste let it. me try it. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, hey, yeah. Right? Potatoes. So what this is a solution mm -hmm. for our nephew, Rob. You hear us talk about him all the time. He is a big part of our life. And he can't have the store-bought instant mashed. Why? Gluten. He's, he's a celiac. celiac. <laughs> so now he can. So I imagine he's gonna he's got a dehydrator. I'm gonna coach him out on it. Like I said, it's a little pasty, not as flaky. Good though. But it's because I used too much potato. Right? It's more yeah, concentrated it's really than the store. Has it so, ever got the potato really, really I know. good taste? It's got a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing more. Okay, give them a taste. <laughs> them the camera. <laughs> I'll it's do it good. again, and again, yeah. and again. <laughs> Handy. Okay, back to the dehydrating. Okay, so we've done the mashed potato. Yay, success, love it. I had a tray and a half of almost lost to us uh, spinach, baby spinach that we found in the fridge. And I've got that dehydrated. You can come in here. Let me, let me just unplug this. It's too loud. You can hear me. Well, it's not too loud. It's a nice background sound. Yeah. But look. Mm -hmm. So, I could easily throw this in the mortar pedestal and grind that into a powder. But I've got like a quart jar full. So I'm going to keep these with whole leaves and I will vacuum seal them. And I'll keep them in the pantry. I'll add to them as I dehydrate weekly. Um, I like these for if I'm making a quiche or something and I just want to throw some on. They kept their shape nice, right? No waste. That's a tray and a half. Now, the peppers. I did cut them sliced thin. However, this is what I'm talking about. About These were on the same dehydrator. These dried quicker. These were on their own dehydrator, five trays. These dried quicker. Now these should have dried, you'd think, just as quick. Listen. See? It's, it's still, there's still that little bit of rubbery. Some of them might be, you, you know, you snap it and go, oh, that's done. Look. No. There's moisture in there. Moisture is bad. These ones are drying quicker, a little bit, because they're on, they're not on this mat here, but not enough to warrant not using it, that's for sure. Got a little crunch. So, and I've got my spacer down here. Technically, I should have be running it with four, but I'm a bad girl. Okay, back on. We'll finish this video up when the peppers are done. Okay, so we're finished. Um, so what did we get from this rescue? We've got five trays of instant mashed potatoes. We've tested them. They work awesome. You just got to work with it, okay? I'm going to leave the recipe uh, conversion at the end of the video up so you can all see it. We've got a little bit of spinach leaves that I can incorporate into some amazing meals. And we've also got some snacks for TV time. These are so good. They're just cucumbers. We didn't even season them. Crunchy, good, healthy chips, and they are good. So I'll put those aside. And then we got <laughs> our peppers. Crunchy. I can use these to make a powder. I can use these to throw into soups and stews or mm. stir fries once they're rehydrated. I mean, it's endless. It, you're... Your limitations are your imagination, and the nutritional value has stayed in here, guys. Like, seriously. Instead of the garbage, it's now nutritious food put up for our family. 
get yourselves a dehydrator, even just for the weekly rescues. I hope you've learned something from this video. Um, the importance of dehydrating, I, I, I can't get on to it enough. Uh, my new pantry is going to have as big a section for my dry goods as my jarred goods. Is that valuable to me? So thanks again for joining us. Remember to give us the thumbs up, comment below, share on social media. It helps us a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And for those of you that do and are returning, thank you for your support. See you soon.